Okay, we're going to crack on then the, with the afternoon session. Please take seats. Okay, fantastic. Did everybody eat lunch? Yes? Everybody ready for this afternoon's session? What about this, this table over here? There's some, someone's on their phones, looking away. I don't wanna, oh, hi. <laughs> ready? Fantastic. Okay, so this afternoon, we're, we're going to hear from each of the tables. Uh, each of you in your groups will have uh, selected a, a chair or a spokesperson from the group. Uh, it can't be the moderator. It can't be the moderator who sat on your table. And you'll come up here and, and uh, communicate to us what were your red dots and what were your triangles and any other interesting um, discussions that happened on the table. Um, we're going to do that for all of the groups. Um, and then we have two further presentations. We're going to hear from the two, uh, two current Siani expert groups as well uh, before we uh, wrap up and finish the day. So I think without further ado, we're going to start with the first table representative. And I'm going to start, we're going to go from the back to the front. So I think it's group seven at the back, is it? Yes. How much time do you have? F five minutes, Max. Okay. Great. You come up, you can use this microphone here. Great. This one here. Or do these, these work maybe? All right, introduce yourselves and, uh, and the group and, and then. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Julius Kanupa. I, I am a student at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, studying rural development and natural resource management. I come originally from Liberia and remain a Liberian. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. My name is Jean Bosco Vihinda. Uh, I'm there. I share the same class with this guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were chosen to be yeah, the representative of this. Of group, group, seven. group seven. Yeah. So uh, the mission statement for our group is changing perceptions on farming and migration to reflect the complex and changing reality. That was the mission statement we got. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Do you want me to repeat? Somebody is like <laughs> changing perceptions on farming and migration to reflect the complex and changing reality. Yeah, I think uh, we will develop it in uh, those points as we, we were, because uh, the, the mission statement was. <clears throat> Uh, was developed from the points that were uh, covered and uh, which were uh, chosen to be the most important, as I can say, yeah. And uh, we have the list of points with max number of red dots. Uh, yeah, we suggested pharma, farmers, eco-entrepreneurs, just uh, changing farming into entrepreneurship just to create opportunities. And then the second point is changing the image of farmers. Uh, that also has got linked to bringing in youth uh, into play. Then we have like value chain analysis, local governance, participation, and raising local accountability. accountability. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I think we go to the next. Uh, is the list of uh, points with max number of blue dots. Uh, there are some uh, key ideas which were tackled uh, both in the uh, red dots and uh, the blue dots, so they gained so many. Uh, farmers, eco-entrepreneurs came again. Uh, focus not only, uh, yes, this one, uh, 
was uh, thought as Siani tackles the, the, the uh, focus on the uh, SDG number two, but also we, th we thought like if there'll be thinking about the interconnectivity just of those SDGs. So we uh, said focus not only on SG SDG two, but intercon interconnectivity of both of all of the SDGs. Mm -hmm. The next one was uh, behavior change and choice values and norms. And norms. Yeah. Uh, the following is consumer. Mm. Yeah, that has to do with consumption and uh, consumption versus producer anchor to look at um, issue of agriculture from both um, the consumption aspects, uh, those who are consuming and those who are, who are like producing. And then we also had this point about raising local accountability as one of the points that got <laughs> yeah, the maximum number of blue dots. And the last point uh, for the blue dots is about increasing the role of research in preventing susceptible conflicts and full security issues. Yeah, just uh, yeah. the role of uh, researching warning uh, and preventing those <coughs> issues that may be seen to be resulted on. Yeah. Then there are... Uh, yeah, there are notes by the facilitator. Do we have to read that facilitator? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very interesting. It's quite a good idea to, to be two up here, actually. It takes the pressure off. So um, these, all the inputs from each of the tables, these go into, uh, we'll, we'll, we collect them up, and then in Siani's, in the secretariat, all the clever experts are working, we, we put it all into a big machine, and then out comes some of the, the bigger trends that we've, uh, that we've sensed kind of within the room through the members here. And that goes and contributes towards our annual work planning that we do. We also had a similar event in Nairobi at the end of last year as well, where those ideas have come out as well. And so what, what happens is this then helps us to steer and to develop our um, focus for the next year and, and beyond as well. So that's why it's really important that all the ideas from the discussion have been processed by you on your tables and then also put onto the, the paper as well. So let's take the next group. Um, I'm going to choose this group at the front here. Please, a round of applause for their <laughs> spokesperson. I think, I think they work. Oops. Up to five minutes. Does it work? No? No. Uh, I'm Anders Malmer. I used to be at, at the Agricultural University for 32 years. Now I'm the forest agency in Sweden. Uh, we had a group dominated by old men. <laughs> and our mission statement is empower local communities ownership. That's all. We had a longer one, more political, saying and, and, and sort of implying what that would mean, like uh, building a better organization for economic development and blah, 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 blah. But that was actually the central, we, we took that away because the central part is actually local empowerment. Then things might happen. <clears throat> uh, list of points with maximum number of red dots. And the winner is promote young entrepreneurship. The second one is address youth needs and dreams in rural areas. The third one is change perception of agriculture for young people. That was three tough one for these old guys here. Uh, <clears throat> sensitize private sector, the agriculture industry, uh, to invest in youth empowerment. Uh, Training and sustainable agriculture and forestry was the fifth one. The sixth one is a long one, and we, we failed to make a short one of it. Um, 
but I'll read it. Um, uh, workshops with the women who usually have a picture of the root causes that men and boys and families leaves. Share their ideas now to network handling disturbances in the community that makes them leave. So maybe uh, about using uh, female uh, knowledge in a better way. Then there were the triangles. We didn't do the triangles because we trashed that, that uh, because we said innovation is not for us. Again, going back to <laughs> if we do empowerment, if if we build or, or support organizations, farmer organizations, uh, women clubs, whatever, the innovation can come there and it can come from experience. Use religious leaders, village chiefs, these people who have power and let them meet the youth and, and there, there we will have in innovation. So we, we didn't think our, all our points were innovative but they maybe can support innovation maybe any additions who'd have thought a table of old white men couldn't stick to the rules hey who'd have thought that um thank you very much always nice to see your own organic interpretations of uh, <laughs> of the roundtable discussions um, and uh, let's move on to the next group. Um, let's take yeah, the one with the hand up there. Let's, let's have that group. That is group seven or eight, is it? Another pair. So if you introduce yourselves and then uh, go on to present the groups. Thank you. My name is Patrick Moneza. Um, I'm originally from Rwanda and uh, I am a recent graduate at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences in Rural Development. Um, you can I introduce yourself? Okay. Um, hello, I'm Eva Olsson. I work at SIDA and um, I am also a graduate of SLU. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so in our group, after discussion, good discussions we had, uh, we have come to uh, say that our mission statement is that Siani should take a more proactive role in promoting a holistic narrative of migration. So, can yeah. they be there? And then the list of points with the red dots that the ones that won in our group was uh, that we should avoid a false false promises of root causes and this I want to explain a bit you know that we are saying now that if we do development then we won't have so many migrants coming to Europe so we have to be able to to see that uh, this development even if we try as much as we can to do it good it might fail. So uh, we should nuance the, the debate around or the, the uh, everything around the root causes of migration. That's one. The other one was support analysis and knowledge of rural ra realities of migration. Uh, and then Siani youth broaden the network and communicate. And then the fourth one is improve women's rights and women's health. Yeah. And the, the list of uh, the poems who who had which had the max maximum number of blue dots, the innovative ones. Um, we thought first about um, north-south cooperation uh, peer peer-to-peer -peer relationship between um, uh, among among uh, Siani members 
um, but by using a social media or a platform, uh, we've been discussing and uh, uh, saying that uh, if Siani has people uh, from around uh, all the four corners of the world, and how can how can what's the impact of it, and how can we benefit benefit from uh, this platform that we have? How can those people connect with each other uh, in order to communicate and 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 share informations and um, in this case in um, in the topic of migration and how to uh, minimize the the risks of uh, or the root causes of um, of uh, non voluntary mi migration and another one was um, um, local adapted strategies to teach local locals on on uh, how how to irrigate and maintain fertile soils so it's also connected to our agriculture and how to empower the locals um, to 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 get to get to boost their project and what they are doing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Um, so now, who's ready to go? Mongolia's group, come up, please. Round of applause for uh, this group. Yeah, my name is Ngolia Kimanzu. I work for the International Department of the Salvation Army. And I'm here representing Group 5, completely gender balanced, I think. Yeah. Um, we had our first mission statement, and that is uh, to reduce poverty via rural development with focus on agriculture, where marginalized uh, groups, including women and the youth. And there was something in brackets, leave nobody behind. One of our members felt strongly very much that it's not enough just focus on women and youth, but they really the poorest should not be left behind in our mission statement. And then uh, some of the dots here that got a lot of points. Number one was we need to establish systems, modalities where the poorest people can decide themselves what needs to be done. We felt that there's too much instructions from NGOs, from everybody on what the poor should do, but they, should, they have a lot of ideas. Just give them money and they will deliver. Uh, and then Siani could assist in building networks with those who want to contribute to road development in different areas. Uh, migrants, refugees, companies, researchers that are represented here. I think that is obvious what CN is doing, but we felt to make it important. And then some of the innovations and the blue dots that we looked at was um, to provide an enabling environment to engage women and youth in agriculture. This kept on coming back uh, for us. Uh, and also the, the last one is to focus on the entire a chain of knowledge generation uh, and also to bridge gaps between the different um, knowledge, both local and academic. So I think that's, that mainly was our focus. We've, we felt that uh, many of the people who are in this enforced immigration, there's a, there's a very big representation of the youth and women and the young ones. So I think our, our initiative should be geared focusing on that group, but also focusing on the theme of agriculture, which, which has been known to have very, the highest return on investment. I think that is all for my group, unless you want to add something else. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And just a, a reminder about Siani as, a, as an actor, is that we, we're an actor who doesn't operate on its own, we are, we are the, the network of the members and all of the organizations who collaborate with Siani. So when you're here saying, advising what Siani should move towards, you're actually saying, well, me as a member of Siani can support that as well. Um, so just forget, don't, don't forget that. Um, okay, so 
we can, who's, any volunteers? Yes, fantastic, come up here. Round of applause, please. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Katarina Antikainen and I'm a board member of uh, FIAN Sweden, which is a human rights organization working with the right to food and nutrition. And um, I'm going to present the mission statement of uh, group number three, uh, which is facilitating improvement of li living conditions and future aspirations in affected areas and inspire from success stories. Um, so <laughs> we concluded that uh, it had to be very general to um, um, get in everything and we tried to answer the, the question that we got uh, on the paper. Um, and then our points of, uh, that we thought were most important were uh, supporting families and communities holistically and improving living conditions and ensuring opportunities for all, similar to the previous feature. Uh, focusing on sustainable employment op opportunities for youth. Re-evaluating the value of nutritious food and farmers. Develop a policy brief on migration, agriculture and climate change, uh, which could be a joint project. That was a more specific one. Um, Land rights, and the last one, uh, land rights conflicts uh, are important reasons for migration. Uh, land reform could be a tool to manage uh, and provide for large groups of uh, migrants. And um, then we have our um, number of um, innovative ideas. Uh, making agricultural activities more attractive in general. Um, making agricultural activity more financially viable, including modern technology in agricultural activity, even for smaller and mid-scale um, agriculture, exploring funding options for online work opportunities and learning, um, building up Sweden's, well, leading by example, uh, building up Sweden's own uh, food security or sovereignty uh, through new public policies on sustainable land use. And then the last one, um, Swinglish, Ax to Limpa project under Siani hat, uh, uniting the actors from start in developing project uh, to implementation, results and policy, policy change. That was all. Thank you. What was the Swinglish word there? Okay, axe to limpa. Farm to fork. Okay, farm to fork. I get that. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> From the grain to the bread, okay, gotcha. Oh, well, there we go. How's that Swinglish? That's entirely Swedish. <laughs> anyway, okay. Anyway, thank you very much, group. Okay, we can take Margareta's group now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Margarita Cuadra, and I work at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences at the Department of Rural Development, so I'm very happy to know that some of my students are here. That's good. I also work for CIANI and SLU Global. And uh, well, this is my group, and maybe you can see that this is more or less the op well, it's completely the opposite of Anders' group. It's only one man in my group. It's uh, women power in my <laughs> group. Okay, um, I will read then what we came up. Mission statement. 
uh, it will be supporting the development of local greener pastures. Uh, then the point with maximum number of red dots, and there, here we have three. The first, collaboration in research aiming at sustainable food production systems. And uh, well, I, I have made some like, a, I don't know, subtitle of that. Creating synergies with other stakeholders through multi-stakeholder partnerships. And maybe I, and now I could make some uh, a small, um, I don't know, do you have, uh, Alin, the, the invitation for the, because we, uh, Ciani and Slow Global, we are organizing uh, yeah, that one, because we, we will organize that in March, the 14th of March. So that will be really interesting, and it will be about uh, facilitating uh, multi-stakeholder multi partnerships. So please come to Ciani, uh, with the web page of Ciani, and, um, register, or you can read more information there. Sorry, that was a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Second is the management and leadership, and I put in bracket governance also, of root causes of non-voluntary migration. The third would be information slash knowledge, knowledge sharing. So those are the three ones that we have of red dots. The blue dots, we only have one which is the mechanism to stimulate small-scale investors and investments. So, those, that, so this is uh, yeah, our contribution from our group. Thank you. Okay, um, by my reckoning, there should be one group left. Is that right? Okay, please, welcome up. All right, round of applause. Yes. Sorry, she's got an injured leg, so we have to have a longer round of applause as she comes up here. Keep going, keep going, round of applause, please. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going, all the way. <laughs> all the way. A little bit, no, okay, we're done now. Thank you very much. All right, you guys can hear me well? Awesome. So I think we are group number four, right? And I would like to... This one? All right, so in group number four, I think we had a very lively discussion between all of us under the leadership of our math facilitator, uh, Patricia. So thank you very much for that. And we seem to have had a lot of discussion and points, but uh, to support our mission, the red dots or what we came into the most popular point was that we need to develop lots of economic opportunities for the people on the ground. So when the they are forced to leave, they will have something in there to say, no, I have something grounding for me to stay on here and hold me accountable for it. We also want, thought that it would be good from the ideas that came in that we would like to invest in innovations. And those innovations will also make it uh, more holding to the people to stay on the ground that they want to stay in. These investments and economic opportunities are also built much better if we have a strong assessment of the current local knowledge on the ground and awareness, if we raise the awareness, especially between the youth and the people. So those things were the major, major points that came in into the, uh, what we call the most popular. In terms of innovation, or what I like to think of as the future, there are two things that came in very clear from our discussion. The first one is de-risking the investment. So when um, business wants to come and invest into something, um, we want to show them that this is a very good investment for them. So we need to invest more kind of what is it we can make a good case for the investors to come and do this case. And we need to find creative ways of, of uh, addressing the barriers that we have on the ground. Uh, so making use of the local resources. But think outside of the box, of that side of that big box that we put for ourselves under the current rules of the SDG, especially after the results from the COP24. So if you put all of those together, we were very, very brilliant, and we came up with the following, in the following statement or mission that we say, we need to create good conditions on the ground for the people to stay. That's what our mission is. 
and we need to develop existing opportunities. So by focusing on those items that I have just said or stated all above. So that's pretty much all what we had and to be continued. So thank you very much. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you all for your uh, hard work and contributions before lunch. Uh, and as a reward, we're, we've got a surprise quiz for you all. And we're going to quiz you on what you learned this morning from, all the, from those four presentations that we have. So I'd like to invite my colleague Katya to come up here and she will uh, ease you through the quiz process. The good thing about it is we get to use our phones, right Katya? Yes. We get to stare at our phones in a conference. Okay. Hello, um, I'm Katya. I work with communications at Ciani. Um, very also happy to welcome you all here as part of the Ciani team. And uh, first, if you haven't connected yet to the Wi Fi, it's a CCC guest, and the password is 2019 2019. And if you have already done that, then please go to uh, www.minty dot com and enter the uh, password which is 133507 so we can all have a bit of fun see what we learned today and um, yeah also a bit wake up from all the uh, after lunch uh, uh, eating that makes a bit sleepy sometimes so are we more or less all up, ready to go? No? Okay, we'll wait a bit more. This quiz we, is based on the uh, 2018 uh, State of Agriculture and Food Security report uh, produced by the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, but please don't go online and look up the answers. Uh, you can do it after. Um, but I'm just saying that because so you know that the data is all validated by the UN. We're ready? You can be a bit louder, just say yes, all together. We're ready? Okay, let's go then. See? It shows 37 people. Right. Get ready. How many migrants move from developing countries to developed countries? Over 90%, uh, 55 to 60%, or 35%? I can see. We'll wait until 39 people, I think. Okay, correct. Most of you, anyways. Ooh, it also provides the ranking of the answers. Look, that's fun. Yes, first fastest. <laughs> Um, question number two, most, in, most inter, international refugees are hosted in the EU, hosted by Canada, the US and the UK, or hosted by low-income countries? Okay. <laughs> the correct one is uh, the uh, hosted in the uh, developing countries. So the majority of refugees or international migrants are hosted in low-income countries. Yeah. 
Question number three. What percentage of international migrants are female? Over 90%, 50%, 25% or less than 10? Half of the migrants actually are women, despite, despite what many people see here on media. Let's see, Jesper. So our, our steering committee chair, Nico Berg, is catching up with Jesper. But the fastest was Laura. My, question number four. Migrants only move from rural areas to cities and urban areas. True or false? So... Most of you are right. You can see the right term. Jesper is leading. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. In terms of employment, only the migrants themselves benefit from migration. True or false? False. Yes, most of you were right. And these are the answers. So more international migrants uh, move between developing countries than uh, from uh, developing to developed countries. And around nine out of uh, 10 refugees are hosted in uh, low income developing countries. Women represent half of the uh, migrants population. Um, Migrants often feel uh, labor shortages in the dis regions of destinations. For example, a lot of migrants end up working in agriculture, supporting rural development of the host countries. And also migrants move uh, not only from rural area areas to cities, but also between the rural areas. Yes, so thank you so much. I hope you all had fun. I had anyways. <laughs> and I see you like it. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. Okay. All right, phones down now then, everyone. Don't get carried away. No more quiz. Okay, um, so now we're going to hear from uh, two of our expert groups. These are groups that are currently in the current period of funding that we have uh, in, in Siani expert groups. But just before they come up and, and present uh, a little bit more information about Siani expert groups and also perhaps what's happening in the, in the next year of expert groups. So we use, we use expert groups as a mechanism for trying to stimulate um, experts on a particular topic relevant to Siani's mission, uh, but to stimulate conversations and interactions that don't usually happen out there in the natural world. So it's, for example, um, bringing uh, the private sector and uh, people and advocacy organizations together um, to discuss how they might tackle issues related to food security and, uh, and, and uh, nutrition. Um, and Siani has, over the past six years, I think, used it as a very, very interesting mechanism to, to fund things to happen out there in, in the world, in the real world, outside of Sweden and sometimes in Sweden, that don't normally happen. And, and we continue to, in every iteration of the funding we do, we, we are evolving the process uh, and trying to, to make, it more, um, make it more valuable for the participants and for the, the populations out there who develop it. And I think these, these two groups we have today are two good examples, one from Africa and one from Asia, 
who um, are able to show really the, the transformative effect of how, this, um, how these investments really that Siani makes in the groups are able to leverage actually real value for participants in, um, in uh, less developed countries. Um, so without further ado, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Carr from uh, Agripreneurship Alliance, uh, round of applause please, he'll tell us about his group. <laughs>